As the dust settled on the Third War and the Legion lay defeated, the Jailer set his plan for freedom in motion. Arthas, the Lich King, created a massive scourge army worthy of the Maw. Kel'Thuzad began a reign of terror in Lordaeron, keeping the defenders of Azeroth busy, while she, who would come to be his ultimate agent, Sylvanas, formed the Forsaken. And with her Forsaken, Sylvanas eventually joined the defenders of Azeroth, eventually as a double agent, plunging the factions towards Azeroth's fourth and most deadly war. That is one reading of Warcraft 3 The Frozen Throne up to now, one where we basically have a bunch of the Jailer's minions, or people he sort of controls, scuffling amongst each other. Is it all too much? Well, it's pretty clear that Zoval has been messing around with us for some time. But seriously, since all the way back in Warcraft 3? Was Vanilla Lordaeron just different factions of the Jailer's agents fighting each other? Does Shadowlands cast a new light on the heroes and villains of Warcraft 3? The answer is yes. And if you want to explore what it truly means to be a hero, you can watch My Hero Academia with today's sponsor, Crunchyroll, who are offering you a 14-day free trial of premium at crunchyroll.com forward slash bellular. A Japanese love letter to US comics, My Hero Academia follows a group of teens who enter hero school to train up their powers, graduate as licensed heroes, and take down the League of Villains. Now, there's a lot to rave about with this show, but the main reason we recommend this is the main character, Deku. He is a unremarkable kid who puts his heart, soul, and a great depth of emotion into his journey. And if you're feeling rough, then honestly, it is a great watch. And if the recent manga hype is anything to go by, you should absolutely stick with it too. You get all 104 episodes on Crunchyroll right now, among hundreds of other shows. Really incredible stuff like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And you get full subbed episodes just after they hit Japanese TV with Simulcast. You can watch on damn near any device you own at full 1080p, all you need to do is pick up that 14-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium at crunchyroll.com forward slash bellular. So, Crunchy, thank you for sponsoring, and let's get back to Warcraft 3. Our story starts a long time ago. The fall of Sargaris. You see, it was the Nathrezim, who we now know were working for the Jailer, who corrupted Sargaris when he came upon a void world and met a bunch of Nathrezim. It's rather telling that the two objectives of the Legion are first, to wipe out all life in the cosmos, uh, life is the opposite of death, and second, to claim Azeroth, something that the Jailer seems intent on taking for himself. So already, the Legion is a little bit of a part of Soval's game, and you can see the consequence spider web from here. Every piece of the Legion strife from the War of the Ancients right through to Antorus was essentially because of the Jailer, because it was his minions who created the Burning Legion by setting Sargaris down a path of sorrow and corruption. All part of the plan? Well, almost certainly. Just read Enemy Infiltration. It's a document that shows us how the Nathrezim worked on a plethora of different things. Basically, all sowing paranoia and chaos in the cosmic forces in the name of the Jailer and the forces of death. Cut hundreds of thousands of years later, and the Legion has burned its path through the cosmos, finding Azeroth. Their first attempt wasn't successful, but it did make the world we know today. Their second attempt was preceded by the Orcish Invasion, something the Jailer wasn't directly involved in, but it should be noted that the Necrolites, Necromancers, and Death Knights were all death-related horde units. You've got to question why Death Magic was always at the core of that part of the horde. In fact, it was Terran Gorfiend, the first Death Knight, who told Nerazul about the true size of the cosmos, and that other planets indeed waited to be conquered. You have to wonder how Terran actually got that information. Then, when Nerazul destroyed Draenor by opening the myriad portals to these worlds, well, 
the plan was a bust, and he escaped. He escaped right into the hands of Kil Jaden, who himself was wrapped up in another one of the Jailer's schemes, the Lich King. We know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that Zoval put the Lich King on Azeroth to serve as his agent. So how long did he have his eyes on Ner'zhul? From the time that Ner'zhul began painting his face with a skull and believed that death haunted him? Maybe. And there are others Zoval has had his eyes on for longer than we had thought. So, what about our Lich King? Warcraft 3 began, and who did we see everywhere? Nathrazine. They orchestrated every part of the Scourge campaign, from building Icecrown Citadel in the image of Torghast, directing the Cult of the Damned, and, most importantly, coaxing the Jailer's chosen champion, Arthas Manethil, toward his ultimate destiny. Arthas killed his father, became king, and began the Scourge of Lordaeron, setting up the arena for the Jailer's agents. Arthas killed Uther, splitting his soul, and used his father's urn to carry the ashes of Kel'Thuzad. He marched on Kel'Thalas and used the power of the Sunwell to resurrect Kel'Thuzad as a lich. A huge amount of power for just one lich, don't you think? And as soon as Kel'Thuzad was back on the scene, he told Arthas that the Lich King was a prisoner of the Legion. Now, if we're to believe what Kel'Thuzad says to us in the Sanctum of Domination, that it was he who orchestrated Azeroth's fall, then he was basically the Jailer's right-hand man on Azeroth. He tells us for too long, he has disguised his motives and served false masters. Masters, that's plural. The Legion, Ner'zhul, and probably Arthas as well. It was he, over everyone else, who made Warcraft III Scourge events happen. That's why Kel'Thuzad was so insightful. He basically understood the bigger picture. He was part of the Jailer's plan. Indeed, it seems almost a certainty that the Plague of Undeath was taken from Maldraxxus, and that is something that lines up perfectly with the fall of the House of Plagues. Yeah, Kel'Thuzad has been Zoval's right-hand man in Azeroth for a long time. But the real key to that's victory in Warcraft 3 is Sylvanas, so it's time to talk about her. The Jailer needed the last 20 years of Azerothian history to go just as planned. But the thing is, it didn't. Each Lich King displayed an inconvenient amount of free will. And, once Our One was installed, Bolvar got even worse, because Bolvar had been touched by light and life. Essentially, he was able to resist the Jailer. That's why Bolvar is so special as a Lich King. So the Lich King plan was a wash. Zoval wanted the Lich King to take over Azeroth and make it ready for him, make it ready for death. But it was not all that the Jailer had in play. Folk and Fairy Tales describes how Sylvanas' soul was split and how the Jailer took one fragment. So think about that leverage and think about the mountains of coincidences that led Sylvanas to become war chief. And of course, the amount of just overt planning, such as Muzala whispering into the ear of Vol'jin. After the Legion's defeat in Warcraft 3, the Frozen Throne suddenly began to leak energy. This allowed Sylvanas to break free from the Scourge. Half of the Undead campaign in Frozen Throne is dedicated to Sylvanas, clearing out the Lordaeron capital and rallying the newly freed Scourge. Once again, in this campaign, the Nathrezim, agents of the Jailer, show up, as they had carved Lord Run up into petty kingdoms, keeping the remaining humans controlled. They had the might of the Scourge and Lord Run, plus the mind-controlled forces of Lord Garethos. Sylvanas had a pack of possessed mobs and some banshees. She won. Not only that, but she took the capital and carved out a huge kingdom for her people. Perhaps the Forsaken were never free. 
Perhaps they were set loose by the jailer as a platform to propel a soul-shattered Sylvanus to the heights of insanity that she needed to get to to break the veil. Or perhaps it is the case that Sylvanus was not part of the plan, but was kept as a contingency, and that when the Arthas plan had truly failed, the jailer then decided, as shown in Edge of Night, to make her a core part of his future freedom. When you look at Forsaken Culture, every part of it was centered around the Dark Lady, as much a cult of personality as a faction. Every time Sylvanas needed an army, the Forsaken would show up with full enthusiasm and pump her enemies full of the new plague. So, whether she started off as an agent of the Jailer or only became one once the contingency plan had to become the plan, Sylvanas was perfectly set up. Of course, beyond Warcraft 3, we do know that Sylvanas, of course, properly meets the forces of the Jailer in Edge of Night in the form of the Nine, those Valkyr. That happens after Arthas' defeat, and from there, her journey toward where she is now would only accelerate, with the Jailer and his closest allies, such as Muzala, becoming more and more involved. And of course, they had to become more involved because the Lich King plan failed, a new one was needed, and that was the main thrust of New Sylvanas' arc. As we bring this exploration to a close, look, hands up, this is a wild area of the lore. Chronicle does not know about the Jailer's existence. Canonically, Chronicle is an Azerothian perspective on Azeroth's history, for the most part, right? At least Chronicle 1 and 3. So, we have to look at the more modern evidence, actually learning about the Jailer, and what then makes sense. The mortals of order, us, didn't know about the Jailer when Chronicle was written. And that more modern evidence does show us that the Jailer has been destabilizing the various different cosmic forces and has infiltrated many of them through his dreadlords. It's implied that Kel'Thuzad was a major, major player and, I mean, who knows, perhaps those first calls drawing him to Northrend were actually the Jailer. Sylvanas has been manipulated by the Jailer, who, for the whole time, has had her soul. For as long as we've known Sylvanas, basically, a fragment of her soul, the thing that made her whole, has been with the Jailer. Right? Like, that's canonically the truth in Warcraft 3. Now, sure, with this, parts of Warcraft 3 feel quite strange, now that we know that the Jailer exists. But that is what's up. Yes. Arthas is fighting the Burning Legion, and yes, the Burning Legion was created basically by the Jailer's minions, but you can see that the Burning Legion is more something that the Jailer unleashed on the cosmos to destabilize the other cosmic forces, which would of course serve his end. So while the Burning Legion were doing things that were convenient for him, he still had to work through double agents who would need to be seen to be against the Lich King whenever it was time to, you know, remove Ner'zhul and move on to the Arthas plan. So overall here, I think you'll agree that Blizzard have set up these characters in a way that makes it seem like Warcraft 3 was very orchestrated by the Jailer. You've got Arthas, Kel'Thuzad, Sylvanas, Ner'zhul, and the Nathrezim. Pretty much Every personality connected to death magic in Warcraft 3 has a strong link to Zoval the Jailer. I get it as well. If we're going to the Shadowlands and finding out where all this stuff has actually come from, it only makes sense to connect evil death magic back to the Jailer himself. But that brings some interesting observations in about the foundations of our setting. Like just how much of Warcraft 3 is the Jailer's fault and is retroactive reframing or the expansion of the lore in such a way that it makes us rethink what we saw and perhaps expansions of the lore that, you know, make Warcraft 3 of context that wasn't actually there when it was first written, you know, is that a good idea? I mean, I guess I'll just leave by saying this. Every time we zoom out, the things that we know look smaller. And if those are the things that anchor us to the fictional world, the fictional universe, then all I'd say is, this is all quite interesting, but do it with caution, Blizzard. Okay, take care, let me know what you think, and have a wonderful day.